So uh, I'm Ken Yu from Auto University. So now I'd like to present our recent uh, submission, improving new networks for genotype friend type predictions using published summary statistics. So this is a joint work with Kola, Aki, Becca, and uh, Samikaski. So if you are interested in the full paper, you could scan the QR code on the corner to access the link. Okay, so in this paper, we deal with a specific application in genetics, which is a genotype phenotype prediction. So in case that uh, probably you don't have the genetics background, I will introduce some terminology here. Uh, so first, a genotype is a typical genetic mutation, uh, which is also called a SNPs. A SNPs can only uh, I take values from zero, one, and two. And in practice, uh, SNPs can be potentially very high dimensional. So for example, it's very uh, easy to have like tens of millions of uh, SNPs in your data set. The phenotype is uh, the trait of interest that we want to uh, predict. Uh, for example, it could be the color of eyes, the body mass index, the cholesterol levels in your blood or something like that. And the task is to predict a phenotype using a genotype. So we can consider this is a classical supervised learning problem where the features are the genotype and the prediction target is the phenotype. Mm, um, uh, this uh, prediction problem is a key uh, component in many genetics applications. Uh, for example, we could uh, generate this uh, polygenetic uh, research score for specific uh, disease. We could also try to find the interaction effects uh, between uh, uh, two genes to recover the mechanism of a certain uh, disease. Uh, also in bacterial uh, genetics, we could uh, uh, predict uh, the antibiotic uh, res uh, resistance uh, for like a new, a bacteria uh, given the genome uh, information or something like that. So, um, so what's the problem? Uh, the problem is if we want to use a neural network to predict the phenotype with a genotype, we need a large individual level data to train the model. Uh, however, uh, in practice, uh, the individual level data of a specific cohort that we want to uh, predict might be very small because uh, probably the uh, whole population uh, of the cohort is uh, very small, then we cannot uh, have a large individual level data. Uh, even the population is high, uh, data sharing can be uh, difficult due to some uh, privacy consideration. And this is especially a problem for human genetics. Um, yeah, but fortunately, in this field, uh, researchers uh, often make the GWAS summary uh, statistics uh, of the uh, same treat, but on probably a different cohort publicly available. So the GWAS summary uh, statistics are just uh, the coefficient of um, a multiple univariate linear regression, where for each model, we just use one SNP to predict the phenotype. And then we report uh, the coefficient and also, for example, the P statistics and uh, the P values. For example, here is the uh, GWAS result of five SNPs on the uh, uh, HDL phenotype. And uh, we know the uh, coefficient the standard error and uh, key statistics and uh, p-values of each univariate linear regression. Okay, uh, so the goal uh, for this uh, project is to improve uh, neural network predictions uh, on some uh, small uh, data set by using the publicly available GWAS summary uh, statistics probably from a different uh, cohort. Uh, yeah, so here is an overview about the uh, whole setup. So yeah, so we have a target cohort, which is a very small uh, data set, but we can access uh, individual level data. And we want to train a machine learning model on the training set. 
then we test uh, the machine learning model on the independent uh, test set from the target cohort, which is like a standard uh, super learning problem. Uh, but here we assume that we have another uh, external cohort, which is uh, uh, very large, but we cannot uh, access the individual level data uh, due to some uh, privacy consideration. Uh, but fortunately, we could uh, access the Jiva summary uh, statistics from the uh, researchers who can access the individual level data. The contribution of this work is we developed a novel, like main effects prior uh, regularization to make use of the uh, publicly available summary uh, statistics into the model training so that the model can use information from both target cohort and uh, uh, external cohort. So even when the target cohort only uh, contains a very uh, small uh, set of the data, we can still get some uh, uh, sensible uh, prediction performance on the test set. So method is actually pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, yeah. So uh, literally main effects prior is a prior on the main effects. So for a, a machine learning model, uh, for example, a neural network, the joint main effects of features is uh, defined by the projection of the neural network uh, prediction on the feature uh, space. So we could consider this uh, by like fitting a, a multivariate a linear regression to predict uh, the neural network uh, prediction. And then we report the coefficient of the multivariate linear uh, regression. We assume that we have a prior joint main effect and uh, the corresponding standard uh, deviation uh, derived from some uh, publicly available Jiva summary uh, statistics uh, databases. Then we define the main effects prior to be just the I1 distance uh, between the model joint main effects and uh, the prior joint main effects, weighted by the uh, position uh, of the prior. And the position is uh, just the inverse standard deviation like in the prior. So to use uh, this manifest prior, we just uh, consider this as a, a new uh, realization and uh, we put the uh, realization into the uh, cost of function uh, of training a, a neural network. And then now we have an additional uh, hyperparameter to cross uh, validate, which uh, controls the uh, strength of the manifest prior. Uh, yeah, in the paper, we did some experiments on simulation data set, real world uh, data set, uh, including uh, homogeneous and uh, heterogeneous data set. But here, I only show the results on the heterogeneous uh, data set. So the setup is uh, the target cohort is actually a Finnish uh, data set where we only uh, have less than 4,000 individuals. But fortunately, we can access the individual level data. Uh, we assume we also can actually access uh, an external cohort, which is a British cohort from the UK Bell Bank uh, with more than 100,000 individuals. However, we assume we cannot access the individual level data, but only the Jiva summary uh, statistics. So in this table, we show the uh, prediction on uh, six different uh, phenotypes, like uh, for this uh, um, uh, six different columns. And for each row, we show a different uh, machine learning uh, methods that are commonly uh, used in this uh, setup. Those uh, numbers are the uh, R square or the um, a PVE on the test set. So basically, uh, the higher the better. We show the uh, performance of those machine learning methods with the main effects prior estimated from the uh, external cohort. So basically, we can see that uh, using the main effects prior from the uh, external cohort can actually uh, improve all those machine learning uh, models. 
Okay, so, uh, so here's a summary. So basically, uh, we propose a main effects prior to make use of the publicly available Java summary uh, statistics to improve uh, machine learning model on a small data uh, setting. And uh, yeah, and um, this is for the phenotype uh, genotype, and uh, this is for the genotype phenotype prediction uh, uh, task. Yeah, and uh, that's it. Thanks for the attention, and uh, I'm open for uh, questions.